All right, let's talk about the road handling and the mechanical components of the Honda Ridge line. First of all, you're going to recognize that mechanics, if you saw our video with the Honda Pilot, well, it's nearly the same engine. So 3.5 liter V6, it's good for 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. And it's also 262 pound feet of torque at 4,700 RPM. Good torque good power you're gonna see that it's more alive than the older version actually it's 30 horsepower more and you've got also 15 pound feet of torque so it really feels when you're gonna get into that power band near the red line at 6008 you you will hear that VTEC engine just over a little bit 5000 rpm and it really sounds nice so it's really cool to have this kind of sound in, in, in that truck. It's very, really lively. So 24 valve direct injection SOHC with the IV tech system. Uh, you've got also an active control engine mount. This is gonna reduce vibration when you're gonna be accelerating and the engine movement. And also you've got a variable cylinder management system that's gonna change when you're gonna be on the highway. Let's say that you're just cruising around exactly like I'm doing right that. Uh, you will have only three cylinder working uh, instead of six. This is really good for fuel economy. And also while it's gonna be operating in three cylinder mode, the rear cylinder bank valves uh, gear closes all intake and exhaust valve to minimize the pumping loss. And this, you don't feel it. You just ride along and it's on three cylinder. You don't have anything showing you that. But when you're gonna be accelerating, it's gonna kick. You won't have to wait to get the famous feeling of those six cylinder pushing you around. It's computer control direct injection with uh, multi-hole fuel injectors. You've got also the use of regular fuel. You don't need premium uh, to get the maximum power out of this engine. And for cooling, you know, you're gonna be working with that truck. You need something good for cooling. You've got an EV duty radiator with dual variable fans. And maintenance is also not an issue with that engine. Between intervals, 160K. This is good for reliability and also your wallet if you plan to keep the truck for a long time. It's mated to a six-speed automatic with grade logic control. You don't have any manual control. You've got a button here on the side which is gonna show D4. And when it's in D4 mode, it's gonna go up until that gear and it's gonna stop there. So it's kind of a towing mode. That's how I can translate it. And you've got also another feature, which is a L gear position. So as you can hear, the engine started to compress a little bit more harder by changing gear. When I move it back to D, there you go to resume its normal operation. So if you need a little bit of oom for, since you don't have any transfer case on this one, well, switch to L and you're gonna be in lower gear. And as soon as you need to tow and you see up L coming up again, press on the D4 button to get there a little bit more quickly and with all power. You've got also a heavy duty automatic transmission coolers. And when you're towing, the transmission is really solid stated. So you need to cool things down. And you've got 20% wider gear ratio spread compared to the older version. Once again, it's, it's much different than this five speed that we used to get in the last generation of a rich line. When it comes to all wheel drive system, well, in the US, you've got the possibility to have a front wheel drive version. Here in Canada, it's the intelligent variable torque management, the IVTM4 all wheel drive system. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, talked to me about the video that I did uh, back with the older version of the pilot where you can see working on ice. I'm gonna put back that video on the channel so you, that you might take a look at it. This one's a little bit different. When you're gonna be in a more performance driving situation, you're gonna be in a turn and it's gonna be able to send you in the curve to, to put the power to the rear wheels, the outer wheels, and you will have a better cornering experience. And it's not the kind of ending that we're used to with the truck segment. It doesn't feel that lively, but when you get behind the wheel of the ridge line in a curve, you can feel that little edge that you can get with the road handling matter. So when you talk about road handling, first of all, you've got an econ button that you can push, and if it's on, you're gonna see that leaf and a green display in there. And right now, as you can see, I'm pushing a lot harder on the accelerator and doesn't react that much. If I press once again to close it, there you go. It feels more lively, changing gear. And I prefer to roll with the Econ mode off. 
You've got also different driving mode, uh, well, an intelligent traction management, as I could say. Uh, you've got normal, you've got snow, you've got mud, you've got sand. So this all-wheel drive um, model will utilize on the newest and most advanced all-wheel drive technology with the variable torque management system. It's more capable and reduced weight. It's improved also all-wheel traction and then the dynamic capability of the truck when you're going to drive in a more performance way. It's the IVTM4 which is progressively distribute the optimum torque between the front and rear axle. So let's say that you're cruising on the highway, it's going to be mostly up in the front and if you need to accelerate where it's going to need traction, it's going to switch to find really the perfect balance in that. It will also shift the traction between left and right. So it's not a locking mechanism, it's all intelligent. So it's gonna bring the wheels that it needs to send the traction to or simply reduce the torque that it's sending to it. So once again, there's a capacity to overdrive the outside rear wheels by 2.7% and create a yawn moment that improve the cornering facility uh, in a curb. There's gonna be also up to 100% torque available which can be transferred to the front or the rear depending the situation. Also in hard cornering situation, 70% of the torque can be sent to the rear wheels that needs it. So it's a big difference and it really show once again. 100% of the torque can also be sent to the rear axle. How it work is really simple. There's an hydraulic operated clutch system mounted on either side of the hybrid gears that drives the rear axle and control the amount of torque sent to each rear wheel and provide a limited slip differential function when needed. Remember our diagonal test? Uh, it's hard on the vehicle. Well, we're gonna see how it handles, but when I check that mechanical specification, I'm sure that it will do really good. We'll see that a little bit later. Let's talk about acceleration. acceleration are good for the class of truck it's it's peppy you feel that it's more yes it feels like on the Accord V6 have you tried it on the Accord feel free to check out the video that we did about the Accord and it really feels like that the other trucks on the competition feel more truck like yes I know this one is a perfect mix between an SUV and a sports sedan yes I say sports because you've got a v6 inside this one so it's 1.5 seconds faster than the older version when go, going from 0 to 100 or 0 to 62 miles per hour it's also fast for its class you got strong acceleration from a stencil point you've got also the size which is a little bit smaller you don't have that big bus the, the transfer case the big shock the big wheels so it's kind of normal that it's fast also for its class but the VTEC sound that you get out of it is really enjoyable when you accelerate when you are going to use the brake you've got a nice modulation you you really have a good feeling once again just like a sedan car just like sporty SUV. This is really great for having a comfort feeling inside this one. Braking is much improved also over the older version. Depending on the speed that you're gonna go, you're gonna see around 11, 10 feet of gain when you're gonna brake. And also when you check the brakes, 12.6 inches up front with a caliper with two pistons, so strong force. And when you look at the back, it's also disc once again, 13 inches. So even during the test that we did we never send those into fume they were never uh, ready to give up on us always add some brake pedal and this is great other trucks have drums in rear and that doesn't impress me much when you're going to be towing also the direction electrically assist uh, it's got a rack and pinion you don't have to do a lot of effort you you cruise around you go into the city you go into the highway and it communicates more than the average truck that you're gonna find in this class. The suspension so smooth over different surfaces, you're gonna have 18 inches wheel. And even if it's bumpy, you don't feel that, that impression of having something a little bit harder in the back because you've got no leaf spring. This one is really different. You've got McPherson strut up in front and you've got a multi-link independent suspension in the rear. Stabilizer bar up in the front 25 millimeters and in the rear 26.5 millimeter. With independent suspension, it doesn't feel like a truck, but still when we're gonna load it, it keeps that comfortable, a little bit lowering that you will see 
uh, when we uh, when we stuff our ATV right there in the back or good old on the four tracks a little bit down that you could saw but going up the ditch you didn't feel that hard movement you could keep a, a very very good balance between comfort and easy access also to light off-roading technology when I look inside the sound system is really great the technology of the speaker in the box is great but the multimedia interface doesn't make one with you. I like to be connected and sometimes it's slow to react and when I'm gonna choose navigation I have to wait, see a blank screen and now it's gonna appear. So let's talk about uh, towing. A truck is made for that. You need to tow something around if you purchase a truck. I know that 90% of the truck who are by, well in this class uh, aren't used so much for towing but still if you're gonna do it you have to know that it's pre-wired for trailer brake control you've got also towing capacity of the possibility of 5,000 pounds if you go with the front wheel drive version for our friends in the US it's gonna be a little bit less 3,500 pounds one thing that I don't understand well you've got the itch which is there but all the balls and the mount that you need to put there it's sold separately. Hey, I buy a truck. I want to have the complete equipment needed to tow. What happened, Honda? Once again, it's an option. Deal that with your dealer and tell them that. Tell them that Matt told you that you need to have every equipment possible when you buy a truck to do some towing. There you go. And if they refuse, write to me in the comment se section down there below. I'll uh, write to them. So it's also wired for a seven pin trailer connection and the payload in the box is different depending on the version so 674 or 713 when we talk about a 5000 pound usually it's a typical boat uh, between 22 to 26 foot uh, trailer if you work and if you have a trailer with tools so around 16 to 18 foot trailer Honda really work hard on testing uh, the towing capacity of the ridge line. They, they send in some of the toughest conditions possible found in America. That included towing a large boat up a stepping hill a lot of time, 14 degree uh, stepped hill and in temperature exceeding 100 Fahrenheit. They do that to try how well it will react and how well it will hold on and it seems that it did but I find that a little bit you know limit when it comes to the towing with a truck like this it feels more like a SUV more like a sedan than uh, really a truck made for towing but still you will enjoy the capability in town of this truck the easiness that you're gonna get into parking when you're gonna go into those deep parking under a building where you need to have some clearance F-150 won't go there uh, even sometimes a Tacoma won't go there but the Ridge line with its low clearance will go there uh, remember also that I like so much off-roading and off-road is really important for me when I'm gonna go into that territory well I need something more capable I need something that will be able to lock the four wheels right now what I have is an intelligent mode that will really break the wheels that it need to give me uh, the better traction possible but also the ground clearance is not that impressive with uh, with the truck you have only uh, a 21.1 degree angle of approach and the thing is that you're gonna earn that little plastic there that they put remove that if you're going to go into rocks please because you will hurt the truck and the fogs are gonna go down remember what happened to the under pilot yes I know it was bad so be careful guys if you go out there with the ridge line departing angle is 22.1 ground clearance is 8 inches and once again be careful to the underbody of this truss because it's not as well protected as the other in that competition overall comfort also in the front it is good you've got a seat that maintains a little bit I eat so cool thing that I have my cooling seats right there uh, you've got also the rear which is non adjustable not that comfortable but really a clever use of the seat if you want to get the better storage possible accessing the truck is easy to get in and to get out and the second door right there will not open that big just just okay for you to get in or out and so it, it won't hurt the cars that are parked right beside of you other than that it's really cool to drive the on the ridge line oh VTEC power <laughs> You've got also a tons of security feature inside that truck. Collision warning system, 
brake mitigation system, rear cross traffic alert. So really the truck is well equipped when you're gonna choose all that system. You've got also a hill assist system, so that's great if you're towing and you have something in the back and you need going up that hill without rolling down. So that is a cool feature. Even if it's automatic transmission, sometimes the truck will roll down. Other than that, you've got electronic brake force distribution. You've got some underlink feature, also auto I beam, the next generation advanced compatibility engineering ace body of the truck. So it's, you're going to be really secure in place. Blind spot information, blind spot monitoring. The only thing that's missing is that so cool camera that we got there. And the lane watch as they called it. I wonder why they didn't put that on the truck. You got also parking sensor, rear view camera, which is really an, an essential when you're driving a truck around in the city. Big or small, I don't care. You really need that. Also, it's a top safety pick for the IIHS if you equip it with all the safety feature of Honda, the Honda sensing technology. Let's talk about fuel consumption. Fuel consumption with truck. When you look on papers, uh, the Honda Ridgeline will do 12.8 liters per 100 around town and 9.5 liter on the highway. So not too bad. Thanks to that cylinder deactivation system on highway, it's really gonna shine. The fuel uh, capacity is 73.8 liter. So the average user will do around 11.3 when it's gonna be combined. What we did, uh, let me check uh, live, uh, trip A right now, 1600 kilometers and we've done an average of 12.2 liters per 100 and when I check my personal, I've done over 1000 kilometers with the truck, 11.2 liter per 100 and this number really increased fast when we did our off-road test and our acceleration test. So if you drive like this, well, you're going to see that it, the fuel is going to disappear a little bit more quicker than you want. But still, 11.2 is not that bad and we could have done easily in uh, the uh, 10 if we wanted to. So just drive carefully around and you will be impressed with the fuel consumption that you can get with this truck.